At the 62nd annual SOT meeting in Nashville, the toxicology community gathers to discuss the latest innovation and research in toxicology. With more than 70 featured and scientific sessions, 2,000 presentations, and 5,000 attendees, the meeting covers everything from microplastics to wildfires. And SOT TV is right here to show you some of the highlights you just can't miss. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Music City and Episode 1 of SOT TV 2023. I'm Max Winnitz. As attendees start arriving at the meeting, we're here to find out more about some of the exciting education opportunities this year. We find out about the SOT Undergraduate Diversity Program, and we hear more about the latest developments in toxicology from organizations around the globe. We learn how the Continuing Education Program benefits SOT members, Lena Smirnova gives insights on gene and environment interactions in autism. And finally, we ask you, the attendees, what topics you're looking forward to learning about this year. As you can see, we have a very exciting program coming up, so stay tuned for our first topic. You're watching SOT TV. First up, we take a look at the SOT Undergraduate Diversity Program. The program supports promising undergraduate science majors from diverse backgrounds with the aim to recruit them to graduate school in the biomedical sciences. The uh, Undergraduate Diversity Program is organized by the Committee on Diversity Initiatives, and it's a three-day event where we bring out 30 undergraduate students, as well as three advisors, to come to the SLT Annual Conference to learn about toxicology, as well as careers in biomedical sciences. Students benefit in a variety of ways, so we allow them to interact with academic advisors, as well as participate in career roundtables, where they can interact with uh, individuals from industry academia, government, as well as being able to interact with peer mentors. Students are assigned into mentor groups that are led by really passionate volunteers. And each of those groups actually stays in touch throughout the year. So students can follow up with questions about graduate school or how to find internships, et cetera, even after this meeting. So in reality, this is about exposure time. For a lot of these students, this is their first introduction to toxicology. So they get to learn the content and the material through our presenters who are wonderful. But additionally, it's just about exposure and actually just kind of falling in love with our fields and learning about all of the opportunities out there. Students benefit from attending and participating within the diversity program because they find a community here at SOT. I feel like it's all one big family. So many of the people that I've met and made connections with last year as well as this year have influenced much of my journey and I want everyone that's able to attend from an undergraduate perspective to make those same connections as well. Diversity is important to promote at any level, particularly the undergraduate level where a lot of the undergraduates have not either heard about toxicology or been involved in toxicology and may not know about uh, advanced degrees in toxicology. So we really try to promote uh, toxicology to a wide array of students in order to continue to build a strong, diverse pipeline within toxicology for the future. It's important to support diversity at an undergraduate level because we want to make sure that those who are from diverse backgrounds also see representation within higher education and within higher career positions, which is something that the SOT program for undergraduate diversity highlights very well. We all come from diverse sectors, diverse backgrounds, and in reality, it's kind of that mosaic approach that really drives the advancement of our career. Um, so if the society was very monotonous, it'd be pretty boring. I don't think that we'd be getting as much brilliant science accomplished as we do because of this. And engaging at the undergraduate is just that first truly important step to moving forward. Organizations around the world are innovating toxicology research and technologies to improve human, animal, and environmental health. So let's take a, a closer look at some of the fascinating work they do. 
Chemical Insights Research Institute of Underwriters Laboratories Incorporated is dedicated to scientific research, publication, education, and communication on environmental exposures resulting from technologies and practices, their impact on human health and processes for reducing risks. Let's take a closer look. As a nonprofit research institute of Underwriters Laboratories, Chemical Insights is on the forefront of researching emerging chemical safety threats facing people today and developing solutions for reducing these risks for the protection of human health. Chemical Insights' core mission is to help protect the health of people and the planet. Over 7 million people die annually from toxic indoor and outdoor air pollution, and more than 90% of our children are exposed to daily levels of air pollution exceeding recommended levels. At Chemical Insights, we are working to change that by combining the best minds with rigorous research to understand sources of pollution and how to reduce human exposure. This will allow us to take a leadership role in improving the air we breathe, extending lives, and helping consumers make better decisions for healthy living. MatTech is a dynamic life science company specializing in lab-grown human tissues. With locations in the U.S. and abroad, MatTech's tissues are the most accessible in vitro testing technology of its kind available. Let's find out more. MatTech Life Sciences was founded in 1985 by a couple of professors uh, coming from MIT. Um, they had developed a uh, polymer surface modification technology to grow uh, human cells on plastic scaffolding. Since then, we've developed uh, 15 different tissue models now based on that similar technology. Tissues that we produce at MatTech are epiderm, uh, epiderm full thickness, epioral, epigingival, epiocular, epivaginal, and epiintestinal. Some of our key products, Epiderm and Epiocular, are approved for OEC test guidelines for skin irritation, skin corrosion, eye irritation, and phototoxicity. Our ultimate goal over the next five years is to try to eliminate the laboratory animal as the go-to standard for pharmaceutical drug development. And to do that, we plan on uh, developing several more organ systems and then developing a platform to string all of those organs together and so that they would communicate as they would in the human body. Next, we speak to the chairs of the SOT Continuing Education Committee to learn more about the importance of staying up to date on the latest toxicology developments. The SOTCE program is really a member-driven type of program here, and it's been um, going on many, many years, and the purpose of it is to really just provide members or any attendee at SOT with general knowledge or information on uh, newer toxicological tools or applications that might be out. The SOT Continuing Education Program is a way that uh, some of the leading scientists in their fields can get um, their best information out to others. So if there's cutting edge research, cutting edge um, regulatory processes, if there are things that are important in the world of toxicology, the best way to get that out to a lot of toxicologists is to uh, educate people through the CE courses. The way to access it, uh, there's many ways. First is at the annual meeting every year on Sundays. It's a full day of CE courses. We usually offer 10 to 14 CE courses. And if you can't make those in person, SOT has a nice library of um, CE courses that are recorded and can be accessed anytime. Thousands of um, SOT members attend CEs every year. And what we do is take surveys. We measure the, the metrics. We, we find out who came, what, what CEs were, have been uh, attended for many years in the past, and we try to come up with good ideas for what people want to hear. So there's over 8,000 members to SOT, and I think SOT recognizes that um, you know, their members need continuing education, they want to learn more, um, and there's always new people coming into the field, and so when you have these courses available for general knowledge or newer technologies, it gives everyone an opportunity to sort of advance and grow. So we try to give a breadth of courses here. Some of them are sort of broader topic areas, 
Um, and other topics that we have are more focused and they might be um, related to a very special interest in developmental and reproductive toxicology or neurotoxicology or learning a special new tool um, in toxicology. So we try to give a breadth of options for the courses so people can get what they need out of their visit here. Well, that's the great part about it is that there is no specific focus. It's what's most relevant to the membership now. So what are the, what are the best topics that are being developed? What are the greatest new ideas? And we don't focus on something and say, no, that doesn't meet our, our emphasis area. That's not the case uh, because it's, it's driven by the members and it's driven by the people who want to attend. CE courses uh, for SOT is a way to help everyone uh, stay certified, um, give them opportunities to, to learn, but it's also a way to make, make it uh, easy for the membership to get their best ideas out uh, into wide circulation, into cr uh, common usage, and to, to make things better for everyone. All right, we are being joined right now by Dr. Lena Smirnova, an assistant professor at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore. Welcome to Music City. Thanks for sitting down with us today. Thank you for inviting me. So why is there a, um, why is there a push right now to consider uh, environmental factors leading to autism? There is a lot of, a lot of things to, to, to think about when we think about the autism and why we think about environment per se is also because we've seen a huge increase in autism cases over the last decade, which cannot be explained only by better diagnostics, for example, or uh, better awareness of general public, uh, or for example, genetics, right? So there is certain component which is genetic, but we are looking for something else which is outside outside the genetic spectrum, and that's that is an environment. An environment, it's not only exposure per se, it's also lifestyle, uh, infectious diseases, uh, I don't know, mother smoking, for example. It's everything is considered to be environment. It so, and we're looking, for, for clues there as well. And how could that, that interaction of genetic and in environmental factors uh, influence uh, uh, autism? So autism is very heterogeneous disease, disease, so it's a spectrum, right? So that's why we have different individuals on different spectrum of the dis disorders. And it's also multigenic disease. So there's a lot of genes which are associated with autism, but every individual gene doesn't necessarily lead to more than 1% of the cases. And also, if individuals with the same mutation, they can have completely different phenotypes or they have, have the completely different sy symptomatic. So and that's we, where we see that environment can play a role and put the pe people with the same mutation and different spectrum uh, or aggravate them, for example, the symptomatic. Let's talk about your specific research. As I, I mentioned, you're an assistant pr professor at one of the, the, the best universities in the entire country. Um, tell me a little bit about your specific research and, and how you are planning to uh, sort of expand that uh, moving forward in the years to come. In my research, I'm using induced pluripotent stem cells derived model. So this is the new advanced technologies. Uh, we call them brain organoids. So it's three dimensional cultures of uh, brain cells of uh, derived from stem cells. So since it's from induced pluripotent stem cells, I can have different genetic background, autistic versus typically developed. And then when I differentiate them in those small tiny balls of the cells, which we call brain organoids, I can see how a certain environment influences the differentiation and whether, for example, those which have a mutation in an autism risk gene are more sen uh, sensitive to the environmental exposure. And this, for example, we published as a first proof of principle study last year in an environmental health perspective journal where we looked into the high-risk autism gene called CHD, CHD8, which is uh, regulated transcription, and uh, a chemical which is under radar for many years, uh, which is organophosphate pesticides, chlorperifors, and we looked how this chlorperifors exposure synergize with CHD8, and we, we saw some synergy in certain molecular pathways. So we saw that the exposure will make uh, the effects of mutation worse. And what, how we are moving forward, we are currently 
working, uh, we have also grants from FDA and APA to look at different other exposures. For example, with, with help from FDA, we look into the metal mixtures. Heavy metals like lead, arsenic, cadmium, chromium, they are all around uh, us. And uh, in some places, kids are exposed, for example, pregnant women are exposed to higher levels of those. That's very impressive. Um, and, and best of luck to you Thank on your you. research moving forward. Dr. Lena Smirnova, an assistant professor at Johns Hopkins University. And join the conference and uh, thanks for joining. Thank you. I will definitely do that. Thanks. We are SOT TV, your daily news show featuring interviews and discussions on hot topics in toxicology from this year's SOT meeting. You can catch us around the convention center in Nashville, in select hotels, on the SOT website, social media, and YouTube. With new content each day of the meeting, make sure to keep watching. And now it's time to hear from, from you, the attendees. We want to know what topics you are looking forward to learning about the most this year. So I'm looking forward to learning more about um, PBPK modeling, physiologically based pharmacokinetic modeling is what I currently do. And so um, I'm just looking forward to strengthening my skills in that and learning more about what everybody else is doing um, around the SOT community in that field. I'm looking forward to seeing the different ways that scientists are using mechanistic data. So I'm particularly interested in risk assessment. So I would like to see how mechanistic data are being generated, but also how they're being synthesized to develop conclusions. So all sorts of applications ranging from research on metals and chemicals uh, or pharmaceuticals just to see uh, cross disciplines what the synergies could be. Yeah, actually, the, we are looking about uh, NAMS alternative test to reduce uh, the animal testing. So we and my team, so all scientists are, would like to uh, see about the NAMS related activity in SOT. So I'm super excited to be here to, uh, to learn a lot about this uh, new paradigm shift uh, taking place in toxicology and risk assessment, generally speaking, in, uh, in, uh, for small molecule. Uh, it's about uh, next generation risk assessment and how to deal with uh, the safety assessment of compounds without or reducing dramatically the use of lab animal testing. So that's the, the main topic for, for me today, uh, uh, this week, and, um, and also about computational aspects uh, that will support this uh, new way of doing risk assessment of compounds. All kinds of topics. So I'm actually on a break from a CE course on systematic review. And that's been really good so far. There's a session on botanicals assessment I'm really interested in tomorrow and all kinds of, all kinds of different sessions. That's one of the great parts about SOT. So that's it for our first day here at the 62nd annual SOT meeting. Things really starting to kick off here in Music City. Tomorrow, we will highlight some of the latest developments in toxicology from cannabis contaminants to toxic aging. Before then, you can watch the show here at the convention center in your, your hotel room and online. And don't forget to subscribe and follow SOT TV on social media. We'll see you tomorrow.